Welcome to 40 Fit Radio, where we bring you science-based, common-sense information regarding fitness, health, and lifestyle for the 40-plus community. I'm your host, Darren Deaton, doctor of physical therapy with 28 years clinical practice experience, starting strength coach, and certified CrossFit trainer. Forty Fit Radio, real people, real fitness, real health. Welcome back to Forty Fit Radio. This is Trent and uh, my co-host Darren, and today we're talking about an issue that is close at heart, at least close to my heart right now. <laughs> it's called the deload. Yeah, Trent's been very familiar with the deload late, lately. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on him too much as his coach, but. But, um, you know, it, it, the deload is something that we talk a lot about as strength coaches. We talk to our trainees a lot about it. Um, but it's something that's important to understand that the deload does not always have a negative connotation to it. It really never has a negative connotation to it. Right. Um, it's neither negative or positive. I mean, it's, it's a response to um, a change in the training model, whether we're strength training or conditioning a change in the training model. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in specifics, but sometimes i we're having this podcast cause I get this question all the time from uh, friends, family members, other people within the strength training industry too. And trainees, when do you, you know, they'll ask me, Hey, coach D, when do you stop strength training? <laughs> and I, I, Basically, my answer to them is, well, never, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I can't stay on the same strength cycle and the same same form of programming that I'm doing constantly. That's got to evolve after, over time as as we evolve as lifters or as individuals doing uh, conditioning, whatever you're doing, your training has to evolve over time. If your training is not evolving over time, then it's probably really not training. You know, yeah, it's, it's more just exercise. And so, um, so I, I get that question all the time. And my response is I don't ever stop strength training, but I might stop the manner in which I strength train. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in this podcast, talk about the difference in volume and intensity and exercise selection and some of those things. But, but, um, the, the general rule of thumb is, uh, is that the deload is used to allow the trainee, the individual to, better adapt or readapt to the stressors that we're applying. So. Right. So we, we talked about it very briefly when we were outlining the starting strength novice linear progression for strength training. Um, the deload is typically used in that model when the trainee reaches a weight that they cannot complete three sets of five with. Right. So if they if they start squatting, they're continuing to climb through the squat and they hit a weight at which um, they can't get a full three sets of five. We'll have them repeat that weight. Do or, it again. Or one set of five on the deadlift or one it's, set of five right on the deadlift. deadlift. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Three and, sets of five on everything yeah. except the deadlift. Uh, and if if they repeat that weight twice and they still can't get it, then we usually call for a deload at that point. Um, so we've introduced that concept. And simply what's going on there is that. Generally, at that stage of, of a trainee's progression, there may be some gross form errors that we need to correct that's just blocking them from being able to advance past a certain load. Um, in some cases, there might actually be um, a case where one, you know, some of the muscle groups have adapted better or faster than other muscle groups, and so we've just got to play catch up. You know, maybe your squat and your deadlift are, are making great progress, but the bench is lagging, um, and so... So, so, so the bench is lagging, and or, or another good example might be uh, here, maybe here's a, a good example. Let's say you're doing squats, and you're squatting along, and your your leg strength is really pretty pretty good, but your low back strength is not adequate to handle increased loads. So right. you get to a point where you're no longer able to really drive with the legs and hold the back angle that you need to hold coming out of the bottom of the squat to finish the rep. 
Well, what happens then is your back angle um, uh, becomes longer, basically, or your back angle basically closes down. That moment arm becomes longer. The load inherently feels heavier in the hips. It is heavier because there's right. more force now on the lum lumbar spine, and, and you just can't stabilize it. So we, we might take that individual, no matter what the reason is, they might get to a point to where they can't get their set, sets and reps done, and so we're going to deload them. We're going to take a percentage of the load off the top and we're going to reset them. And we might do that an average of two to four times in the novice linear progression based on the individual trainee. Right. I might right. do that several times. Trainees get really frustrated with me <laughs> because I keep, I, I, I'll do that, you know, three or four times with almost all trainees. And the reason why I do that is because I want to make sure that we are milking every last bit of strength out that we can during that early uh, portion of strength training. And usually that's anywhere from, you know, it could be anywhere from six weeks to 12 weeks. It could be longer than that. I've, I, I've had guys go almost a year in some form of linear progression. Now we've gone from novice to intermediate programming, but, right. but still they're in a linear progression still. Um, and we're just continuing to, you know, uh, try to tweak out or, or squeeze out a little bit more strength, a little bit more strength along the way. But, but when, when we think about the D load, you could, you, you're really talking about load or intensity here, but you could deload volume too. I mean, right. it, it's the term deload makes us think of load, makes us think of weight, but you could deload volume too. So you could change volume and intensity in, in the sense of the novice, when they're doing barbell training, we're, we're basically going to uh, reduce the weight. We're going to reduce the weight um, that can become more complicated in the future. Um, as their programming complexifies over time, um, we can um, change the way that we do those things. We can, we can increase or decrease volume. We can increase or decrease load. We can do back offsets. We can do all these different things. But we're just talking about the basic concept of the deload today. So the deload in general is a reduction in load or the intensity, let's just call it the intensity of the training and we usually do that with the novice, but we also do that with intermediates and advanced trainees. Um, and there are many different reasons why we are deloading. Let's just go through a list of, um, of the deloads, the re some of the reasons that we might deload someone. So it could be that work got in the way. They got away from training. They've been traveling for work uh, or their work is more stressful and they haven't been able to get their sets and reps in. They've missed three sessions. They've missed a week worth of training. I missed eight days worth of training the other day, or, or for eight days, I didn't train, so I missed basically three separate training sessions. So when I went back into the gym, I didn't uh, hit the squat, the press, and the deadlift at the same load levels, the same weights that I had prior. Now, that changes from individual to individual too. And that's the value of coaching. That's the value of having an experienced coach because for someone that's older, I can guarantee you that they are going to detrain quicker than someone who's younger, but someone who's older and has a long training history and has a lot of mature muscle mass might detrain less than someone who is younger much younger and hasn't been training as long. So it's all based on where that individual is in their maximum genetic potential. You know, the curve that's in starting strength that shows right. the, that progression of how an individual um, improves in whatever area of physical performance they're, we're, we're um, trying to target. And as they get closer to the top of their genetic potential, that upper level strength, that upper level conditioning, that upper level speed or power or whatever it is, that falls off very quickly because it's at the very edge of their genetic potential and it's very hard to maintain that. So it really matters where the individual is. So what we do um, at that point is we reduce the load when the individual goes back into the gym. So it could be work, travel, it could be a vacation. Yeah. I've got a lot of trainees that'll go on you know, a 10 day vacation, a 14 day vacation, and they don't have access to the gym or anything. And I tell them, you know, just enjoy your vacation. But when they come back, I'm automatically going to reduce the load for them. 
And if I was doing conditioning training, if I was if I was working with them on like cardiovascular training or aerobic capacity, and they were uh, a runner, then I might reduce the tempo requirement or reduce the intensity, the speed, the pace that I would set for them when they came back. Um, and I, and I reduce that some so that we can accommodate for that time off. Yeah. Now, do you find that certain lifts or, or certain types of conditioning, uh, detrain faster than others? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, and this is just anecdotal evidence and just experiential what I've seen with trainees and what I've experienced myself. I, I don't know if there's any science behind this, but I, but I think that lifts that are more compound and more complex, like Olympic lifting, where technique is really, really important. Or when you take the squat versus the deadlift, the deadlift is a hip hinge. You bend over, you get your back straight, you keep the bar right over the midfoot, and you pull the bar right up your shins and thighs. It's a very simple movement. The press is a fairly simple movement, but it it, uh, recruits a much smaller muscle group. And so you're not able to recruit as much muscle mass. The numbers are usually lower to start with, much lower, obviously. And so you have to deload that more. You, you, you think you have to deload that more, but if you look at it percentage-wise, it might be a fairly, per, a fairly equal percentage. Sure. But yeah. I would say that um, the simpler lifts that require less technique are going to be um, – uh, you're, you're going to feel like you have to deload them less, and the ones that have the greater muscle mass recruitment. The, the lifts that use smaller muscle groups, less musculature to start with – and are more compound or more complex in their nature, you probably feel like you have to deload more. That just seems like, does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes just sense. It seems <clears throat> like it would be a natural thing to happen. And that's, I think that's what you and I are talking about. That's what we right. both experienced. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think that makes sense. We've talked about this in the past that uh, when you come back from a layoff, even when you take a deload, it can feel really heavy. I yeah. mean, it can feel oh, yeah. heavier or as and heavy as the I don't know if that's in loads. my mind or in yeah, and it's you know maybe it's both. just a mental thing, but yeah. uh, certainly yeah. yeah. So it you know it's definitely you have to uh, readapt your mind as well as your body uh, when you're coming back from a layoff. Yeah, I mean, I have a female trainee that that she'll be rocking it along, and she kind of gets off the rail on several occasions, and and um, and she'll she'll walk into the gym and and. Sh- you know, she'll have, she wouldn't have squatted in a while and she'll hit that load and she's, God, it feels crazy heavy. And I'm thinking to myself, well, she's only missed four or five days, but she is an older athlete, an older lifter. And at the same time, if I've been working her really hard, I'm thinking to myself, wow, she might hit some good, really good numbers today. This might feel really light for her because we actually gave her a little, a little bit longer rest cycle, a little bit longer time to recover and adapt. But because her, she hasn't been under a heavy load in, in that time frame, just like we talked about this earlier before we, before we launched this today, and that was that sometimes you just go in the gym and it just feels heavy. In your mind, it yeah. feels heavy. There's good days and bad days. Yeah, yeah and you're, sure. you know, I don't know if that's a mental thing as much as that is physical. Mm-hmm. It, it's all based on how long you've been away, away from the, the bar or how long you've been away from training, period, whatever it is. And so sometimes that's, that's your mental adaptation um, and you need a mental deload and some of that's your physical adaptation and you need a physical deload. But um, so another reason that we might deload someone would be form and technique. We talked about this earlier that, that if I have a, a trainee that is just, we're just not progressing in the quality of the form that we want. I, I've got a guy right now that, that in his deadlift, we're really struggling with getting the back straight and getting the back locked in extension um, through the pull on the deadlift. And so I, I really think he can pull more weight, but he can't pull more weight with, with good form. So we automatically just took some load off the top. We did a small deload. I think we deloaded him about 7%. Um, and that was that was kind of a random number. He, he's in the low threes on the deadlift. So a 7% deload, you know, dropped him basically about, let's see, what would that be? 10% would be 31 pounds. Yeah, so 20, 25 so, pounds. Yeah, we took about 25 pounds off the top, I think. And so that's enough weight, though, to where I can get him less focused on pulling a heavy, heavy, heavy load and more focused on setting up, getting the right back angle, getting the right position before he pulls. And so so I, I kind of think of it this way. It's almost like a, a radio, an old, old school radio. If you turn up the radio too loud, you get too much static and noise and you got to turn the radio down a little bit so you can clean out the, the, the signal a little bit. 
And with lifters uh, or trainees, I think it's the same way. You, you drop the weight back a little bit, and now you can clean up the movement. And then what happens is, man, they just go through the ceiling. Yeah. All right? Because, because now you, you're, you've got better recruitment of muscle mass, better form, better physics. Right. So scientifically, it's just a much better equation for success long term. Yeah. So that's, you know, just as a, as a general point there, or general takeaway there, if you're struggling and you're hitting a plateau and you haven't had your form evaluated, it might be the time to go and, and do a checkup with a coach because, uh, yeah, it kind of multiplies the comp, the difficulty of the lift, you know, a little form breakdown, not so bad when the weights are light as they get heavier, there's less and less tolerance for any kind of form deviation. Right. And I think, you know, people can be stronger and not able to use that strength just because the technique is not adequate. Sure. And then all of a sudden you tune up the technique and the form and that strength is expressed in the way that it should. A good example would be on the power clean. They could have crappy technique in the power clean and they've got power leaks everywhere and you, you, you clean up the power clean and all of a sudden um, they're able to express that power in a way that it's designed to be expressed. And, yeah. and that's, that's the same concept there. So um, the other thing, the other reason we might deload is because there, there's, you know, one of the big reasons you talked about already with it, with a novice or with any trainee is that there's just not enough adequate adaptation. When we think about the stress, which is lifting weights yeah. and loads, or, or it could be cardiovascular training. When we think about the stress we're applying to our client, and then we think about the recovery cycle, and then we want them to adapt. Well, they may not have enough recovery or the stress may have been adding up over time enough to where the stress is great enough to where it really doesn't matter how much recovery we give them uh, during that week's worth of training. They're just, they're not adapting anymore. Right, right. So we might deload them. And again, that's just because they're not hitting their sets and reps. Exactly. Um, and that's, that's generally going to be a reduction of five to 15% based on the reason for the deload. And um, another thing would be sickness, illness, or injury. Um, in injury is a little bit different than just being sick. Let's say I have a trainee that gets a flu and they're out for 10 days. I, I had a, uh, a guy that I trained actually recently and he was out for, I think about eight days. And so right off the top, I took, I took 10% right off the top. He went into the first session and he said, man, that felt really heavy. And so I watched the reps. He's an online training client. I watched the reps, and the reps looked pretty heavy. Yeah. So I went ahead and took another five percent off the top. So I used I I used the 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 bar speed and the movement quality and the trainee's response, not just the trainee's response as to how hard it was, but I used all three to say, yeah, I'd rather go ahead and take five percent more off the top and see how he does with that. That was not that much lighter, but it was light enough to make him feel like, okay, I got this. This, this feels pretty good. Um, and we're right back at it. Now we also, when that happens, when we do deload someone due to illness, injury, travel, sickness, um, stress, um, whatever the, those types of reasons are, we don't necessarily have to deload them, reduce the weight and spend all that time climbing back up. If, if, they're, if they're out because of an illness or a sickness, I might be able to ramp them up pretty quickly, you know, instead yeah. of taking what would have took, what, what instead of taking maybe um, four weeks to get back to where we were, or three weeks, I might be able to ramp them up in 10, 14 days. Sure. And they're yeah. right back at it. Yeah. Because we didn't really lose that much. Now that also is dependent upon where they are in their training. Who is the trainee? How long have they been training? How advanced are they as an as a client? Yeah, I wonder. So, how would you how would you approach a client that came to you and said, "Hey, look, you know, I used to be really into strength training, but it's been a year or two. Um, you know, I used to squat four fifty, but I have no idea what to do today." Um, how would you approach a guy like that? I mean, you know, would you be able to progress him um, faster than normal? Well, I, I think he's he he has the potential to get stronger faster than, than a, a ranked novice does, but he's going to do novice programming just like anybody else. If he hasn't been under the bar in a while and, and he hasn't done consistent strength training in a while and especially done it in the method that we use yeah. in the starting strength method, then I'm going to put him back under the bar. I'm going to teach him the movements first. We're going to do a startup session. I'm going to teach him the movements and we're going to go, 
Um, you know, it could be a guy, let's say the guy's 55 years old and he says, man, when I was in my thirties, I was a bodybuilder. I was really strong and, and blah, blah, blah. And he's got this great base yeah. and he stills carrying some muscle mass and he still works out quote unquote, you know, he exercises, but he hasn't done barbell training in a while. Novice progression. Yeah. Novice yeah. linear progression. Now he mm-hmm. may peak out faster. He may hit a plateau faster and we may go into intermediate programming and advanced program much faster than we would a rank novice, but I'm still going to approach him exactly the same way. We set the loads the same slowing of the bar path and we do everything the same with that, with that trainee. Now let's say that they've just recently had a short period of time off. Let's say, say they've had a, a month off of training. Then yeah, with that individual, if they've been doing what we do and what we prescribe, what we coach, then uh, I could quickly get them back. You know, we can go sure. a lot faster. Yeah. We can accelerate that process. What we don't want to do is jump the gun, have them have them hit a plateau so, so early in their training that there's no blue sky at all. Yeah. And that's very frustrating mentally, too, to go into the gym and be able to go two weeks and have to deload or have to change, you know, change things. When we just weren't allowing the individual a long enough time to adapt to the stresses that we're applying. Yeah, I think that's a great point. In general, it's better to not get stuck in the first place than it is to get stuck and have to get unstuck. You know, it's yeah, going to happen to everyone. Yeah. It's, you know, there's going to be plateaus in, your, in yeah. everyone's training career. But if you can avoid, uh, you know, plateauing in the first place um, with, with intelligent programming, then yeah. it's always better than having to, having to deload. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think you know, we, we think about deload and uh, everybody kind of thinks about that in a negative connotation. But it's really not negative at all. It's, it's, it, it's all based on why we're doing it. So the, the response to deload with volitional coaching, coaching that's, that's purposeful, is a good response, you know, nine out of ten times. You know, I mean, we all make mistakes with trainees, but it's, it's a good response. Um, to not respond, if you have a trainee that's been out for two to three weeks and to not respond to that, by changing their programming or changing the volume or intensity in their programming, you're not coaching. You know, and, and, or they're not training, <laughs> they're, we, <laughs> yeah. they're exercising, right. there, there really wasn't enough stress. If, you know, I always tell guys, if you can go back in the gym and do exactly what you did a month ago and you haven't done anything for a month and it seemed about the same, then you really weren't providing enough stress to do anything anyway. It's exercise. It's not training. And, you know, we know, we all know a lot of people who do that, you know, lots of people who do that. So we want to we want to try to avoid doing that with our clients because we want to train with purpose. So that's the first thing to recognize is that it's it's a positive event. It's something that's going to allow us to allow the client, the trainee, uh, you guys out there, to get stronger, faster, to get more um, aerobic capacity, to get leaner. Whatever you're doing, we we want to use the deload um, as a as a tool uh, to a response to the training stimulus that we're providing. In general, I will deload someone, like I talked about earlier, about 5 to 15% based on the reason. Um, if they're just out for a short period of time, I might take a 5 to 10% deload. If they're out for a prolonged period of time, let's say upwards of 10 to 14 days, and they've been significantly ill, like with the flu, and they've lost weight, yeah. and they've been dehydrated, that's a different client. That's a client that I might take 15% off the top, you know? And so if they've been out because they've been in hate, in, um, in um, uh, the Maldives for two weeks and they've done (laughs) done nothing but get massages and run on the beach and hang out and read books and go out in the evenings and have great dinners and and drinks and everything that I'm probably not going to deload them as much. Why? Because I want to torture them. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we have, we've got a uh, we've got a plentiful source of calories. To, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and they, you know, and you know, some people they come back and you think they're going to lose something and they just dial right back in. You know, so um, I've had that happen, and and some of that might be that they were a little overtrained. And so they came back and they felt better than they did before when in reality you would have expected them to feel worse. Well, yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned in there the effect of stress in this. And, you know, I think sometimes we overlook this, but, uh, you know, there is a hormonal response to psychological stress. You know, sure. there's cortisol sure, is a thing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've, I've certainly noticed, uh, this year, you know, when I've, I've been in kind of my, when I've, your, I've, your, your prolonged, uh, uh, infinity deload. Yeah. My infinity <laughs> deload. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to go negative at some point. Yeah. I'm just going to float up in the air, <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I that's okay. The old man's passing you up, so no worries. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. uh yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah, you know, it's like um there's definitely a component to uh to life where, you know, psychological stress can have a real impact on the bar. Oh sure. You know, and it's uh I don't know if that, you know, how much of that is just mental, if you're just not a hundred percent dialed in when you're you know, squatting your sets, you're doing your conditioning, or if it's uh if it's purely a physio- Hormonal, physiological, physiological yeah, change, yeah, you know, I think yeah. it's a little bit of both, Yeah, sure. um, but it has a real impact and, and we can't overlook that. So, you know, if you're going through major changes in life, you know, like this year, I, you know, I, I left a corporate job. Mm-hmm. I became, uh, you know, self-employed. I completely changed, did a complete 180 in my career mm-hmm. and what I'm, what I was doing. And, uh, man, you just moved recently. You just I, moved, I just moved, moved you know, and it's, uh, my wife has, has also made a career change this year. So, you know, life has just been pretty crazy. And even though all of these are positive changes in my life, um, I, you right. know, I'd like that all of these things are happening, man, it still has an impact. Sure. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to just be gentle with yourself. Let's, you know, let, let's, let's roll yeah. with the punches. Well, and I think, I think like we talked about before, um, you, you, um, uh, you can either look at this, you can either look at deloading and being away from the, being away from the bar is not really deloading. Um, deloading when you go back to the bar is deloading. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, being away from the bar is, is it detrains you and you, you're basically, you know, taking a sabbatical from training. But when you deload, you're basically, um, you're, you're making a choice uh, or when your coach deloads you to respond to the fact that you haven't been training or that you're not adapting fast enough or that um, uh, you're, you've been ill or whatever it is. But I always think about it this way. If you are training, and I throw the quotes up in the air, you know, the whatever, whatever Rip calls these, what are these? The, the air the quotes. Air with, quotes, with yeah. the wrist. The yeah, wrist yeah, action the wrist, is the... the wrist action is the key. If you are training, air quotes, with the wrist, um, then you're better off then 99.9% of the people that are out there exercising. Yeah. So it is a positive still. You can come back in the gym, you get back after it, you drop the loads down, you climb back up. If the first session, it feels really heavy, it might. And it might, like you said, it might be psychological, hormonal, um, recruitment-wise, technique, everything. Yeah. And which, by the way, you know, mm-hmm. one, one kind of quick check is, you know, video your sets. If the yeah. bar's moving moving nice and fast, then, uh, that may just be a psychological thing. You may just have to adapt your mind to having yeah. a heavy load on your back. Um, but if, if the bar is not moving so fast, then okay. deload a yeah. little more, sure. Yeah, Take drop a, a little more pounds bit, off, drop a little bit more off the top and, um, and get back after it. But the last thing you want to do, you, th- there's, there's two big mistakes. Number one, uh, you know, we, we, we never consider it a mistake if you get ill and sick, it just is what it is, right? If you're just purposely not training, if you're not training, that's a mistake. You're not doing the program. That's a mistake. Um, and we have to deload because of that. If you, if you um, have a life event that's an uncontrollable life event, hey, it is what it is. But if you're deloading because you're, you're, you've gotten crazy strong and you're no longer adapting and you have really worked hard and you've hit all your, your, your diets dialed in, your lifestyle habits are dialed in, and you're hitting all your sessions, wow, that's a great positive. That's a wonderful thing. So... Uh, you know, the deload can be used um, in a lot of different ways. Um, I think some of that takes some experience, but in general, it's a reduction in load, 5 to 15% off the top. Those are some of the pearls. Um, and the longer you've been out, the, the more you have to deload. And also, if you've got an illness or something or some significant injury, the deload requirement might be a little bit higher in percentage. But otherwise, get back into the gym. Get those sets and reps done, get your fives done, and get healthier, stronger, and fitter, right? I like that. Okay. Well, as always, um, if you got any questions about your own deload, if you've got, if you want to hit up uh, Coach D with uh, some questions about how, how you should do this, how you should apply this to your own training, go to the Facebook page at 40 Fit Masters Community and uh, leave us a question. And of course, you can also go to at 40 Fit Radio on Instagram and leave us a question there. So we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.